This is a wonderful moment for us all when we know that Pope Benedict will be here in September and we know exactly now what he's going to do. And so I, it's hard to express the, the sense of joy and excitement. It is in fact the first time that the Pope, any Pope, has been invited here by Her Majesty the Queen and by her government. So this is a deeply significant moment for the country as a whole and of course for the Catholic community. And I hope it will show the Catholic community as being a real contributor to the well-being of this nation and the message of the Catholic faith as one that is of health and good life and real depth of virtue. And Catholics can support this mission of the Pope, obviously by being there, by wanting to be with him and greet him and pray with him, but also showing by the way we do everything the, the joy that comes with our faith. The, that quiet inner poise that faith gives us in life and that openness towards others, that joyful acceptance of others, that is its flowering. So we can support the Pope and witness to our faith by the way we live, by the way we behave, and by the way we invite those around us to make the most of these few days of this mission of Pope Benedict to this country. The invitation to take part in this visit is extended to everybody without exception. It is not an invitation simply to the Holy Father to come and visit the Catholics of this country. That invitation would have come from the Catholic Church. But it's an invitation to the people of this country to meet with Pope Benedict, to listen to his witness, to, as it were, relate to him. And he is a profoundly sensitive and intelligent presenter of the message of Christ and of the teaching of the Catholic Church. We now have um, quite a few months in which to get ready for the visit of Pope Benedict. And I think we prepare for it in a number of different ways. The Holy Father himself asked us to prepare prayerfully. And he called us to be a little more profound in our devotion, in our openness, attentiveness to God. And he promised that he would keep us in his prayers and hold us in his heart. So we must do the same. We must pray for him in his mission, in his journey to this country, and hold him in our hearts. And I think we should also prepare by studying a little more deeply the messages that he will undoubtedly bring to this country. Uh, he is the supreme teacher of our faith and we should look again at the ways in which he teaches about the relevance of faith in our world today through his three great encyclical letters. And they are, of course, to do with faith, hope and charity. So what better preparation for us than to understand the teaching of Pope Benedict and be ready to receive it anew and afresh. Of course, a very important part of this visit of Pope Benedict will be the beatification of John Henry Newman. And Cardinal Newman uh, was for 30 years a parish priest. And it's lovely that this beatification will come just after the end of this year for priests. And it is a very remarkable moment that an English parish priest is being declared blessed. And this will be, I'm sure, a moment of great encouragement for every priest working in these countries at his parish duties in an unspectacular but very faithful way. That's what Cardinal Newman did for 30 years and that is a large part of why we can look forward with such pride to his beatification. Pope Benedict is a herald of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the core message that Christ brings is of God's gift of himself to us.
And that is a gift of love and of truth and of compassion and of forgiveness. So right at the heart of everything he will want to say will be this message of the reality of God's love, touching our lives, opening what, everything that is best in us and helping us then to work together for the genuine integral good of every human being.